once more welcome to the You Can Be Anything podcast. I'm your host, Solange Che, and today I am blessed with yet another amazing guest, right? I keep telling you people, I go out, I look for those people who are willing to share their stories, who are willing to share their experiences, to come up here and give us the gist. So today I am honored to have our very own Dr. Snow Bobby. And thank you so much, Dacas. I'm sure I told you already how much I appreciate you saying yes to my invitation. And thank you and welcome to the You Can Be Anything podcast platform. The pleasure is mine. <clears throat> pleasure is mine. Also, thank you for having me on your podcast. I really do appreciate the invitation. My pleasure. So again, my dear guys, today we have Tadzin Celestin Sunyoy. He is going to tell us a little bit about who he is, and we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about his character, Dokas. So we'll be referring to him, Celestin, but again, remember, we'll be referring to her as Dokas, right? So this is that one skill that is so hard. I don't know how you people do it, to play two different personalities. Uh, okay, you're going to tell us how you're doing that. But please tell us a little bit about yourself. Who will you say you are? Well, uh, like we earlier on said, my name is Tadin Celestine Sunyoy. I hail from the Northwest region, precisely from Zor. Uh, both parents are equally from Zor, but uh, all my life I've lived in the Southwest region, precisely Boya. Um, attended secondary school, uh, Lycee Moliko. Uh, attended uh, the University of Boya where I obtained my uh, degree in journalism and mass communication. Mm. Yeah, I'm the first. I'm the first child of four, and an only male. Oh, so <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> um, you talked about journalism and mass communication. Let me tell you something a little bit. If I, in my podcast, I've always talked about how much I wanted to read journalism and mass communication in Boya, but I got rejected twice because I did not have enough points, and I was so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> so again, you're one of those that that department. <laughs> yeah, and actually, um, <clears throat> the first year I wrote, uh, the, like the first time writing the advanced level, I didn't have uh, the cutoff points to read it. As in, I had about, is it, I, I remember it. And yes. the cutoff point was from nine. And I've always yes. wanted to read journalism. So I had to repeat. Oh, to really? Repeat you had it and you repeated? I repeated yes. with three. So my first year, I had three because points. <laughs> Because for the love of journalism, I had to repeat because I, I really had the passion for it. Yeah. So I repeated, wrote again, and I had the points I died to study. Then, you know, the irony? Tell me. After getting the points, that's when all this madness started. <laughs> so they just, had, they just had to be flexible now with their cutoff points. Okay. Interesting. So people with, people with two points now ended up studying journalism. Please don't say Whereas that. It hurts me. <laughs> Whereas I was repeating because I had uh, low points of it. Now people with two points. Um, uh, so getting back to what uh, we are talking about, I'm 26 years old. Yeah, I live where in Great at Great uh, Campaign Street, Great Support Boya. Yeah, so I think that uh, basically. Enough info about the cast. Or should I say, I'm also a hairstylist. As I'm specialized with dreadlocks, like the one I have on my hair. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. say that. I'm a, I'm a handball player. I'm a handball player. I have also done humanitarian work. I've worked with an NGO fighting against gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, like quite a lot I really venture into that many people don't know. They know me as a uh, comedian, but there are some things, vital information about me that many people don't know. That's interesting. Thank you for bringing that up because the truth is, yes, I know you as the cast, right? Because when I yeah. saw the character the cast, I was like, whoa, who is this? This is amazing. And I followed you. I watched your skates and all of that. So, yeah, you do all of these things on the side. You play handball, you're a hairstylist, you're into humanitarian work. That is you. That is what you do. And you're still a comedian. But before we go into what inspired you, right, 
I want to, I would like for you to share what inspired this character, Docas. Where did your inspiration come from for you to be able to be Docas? Like, um, I'm even surprised I could even pull this off. Because graduating from the university as a journalist, my top priority was probably to work with CNN, Al Jazeera, these big media houses. Mm -hmm. But um, my, a friend of mine, I remade a video on TikTok. Yeah. My, I posted it on my status. My friend watched it and I was like, if you can recreate someone's work and is this good, just imagine you doing your own stuff because we enjoy you, your company and everything. You're, you have a good sense of humor. Why not create something? Why not create channels where you post this, make these videos and you post them? Mm -hmm. I just listened to it. I was like, okay, let me just give it a shot while I'm waiting for my other big dreams to come up. Yeah. So I did a video. And while I was in front of the camera, the name Docas just popped in. So while I was making the video, I just called myself Docas. Docas. <laughs> And the video just went viral. Yeah. Like everyone who set eyes on the video, they wanted it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, now let me consider this advice coming from this, my friend. So I said, okay, if I want to get into comedy, let me not just do anything basic. Let me not do what everyone is doing. Yeah. Let me bring something unique. Yeah, now in other countries, uh, we see cross dressing comedians and everything. But in Cameroon, especially the English speaking parts of Cameroon, we don't have anybody, we didn't have anybody who embodied the character, who took it as an art to develop it. You could see maybe one or two comedians who just um, take that part, but not for long. They'll do it maybe just one or twice and then leave it. So I decided I want to have a hold of it. I want to bring it uh, into our own society. Let our fellow Cameroonians enjoy what they enjoy from other countries. Let me make this, let me make us to be made of Cameroon content. Yes. So that's how I started uh, conceiving the idea, costuming and everything. So it was not just a day something, it was a process. Yep. That's why if, if one goes back to my beginning videos, you will see some lapses in the character that you can see now fully developed. Okay. So it was actually a process. That's a process you've gone through. Yeah. That's nice. Again, something that you've said that I'd like to reiterate on is the fact that you have a bachelor's degree in journalism and mass communication. We all went to school in Cameroon, hoping to get somewhere. You and I just chatted a little bit about how much we both wanted to get into the journalism and mass communications department, but due to the point, the cutoff point thing, um, we got limited. For you, you probably went and came back. For me, I never went back. I found linguistics and I took it and I ran with it and I enjoyed it. But you see that after graduating and all of that, unfortunately, I will say maybe it's just God's way to push us to find our talents. You were not able to get into Al Jazeera or CNN or BBC or even CRTV, but you did not just sit back and gloom. You decided to find, you decided to find what is in you, which is what we're trying to encourage all our other peers to do. Because the truth is, our education when we go to school is going to give us the knowledge. It's going to help us to fit ourselves in the society, but it's not going to put food on our tables. At the moment, journalism and mass communication is not feeding you. The talents that you have decided to bring out of you, that is what is feeding you, Celestine. And yeah. this is something that I appreciate a lot. This is something that when I look at people, I try to look for that thing. And that is probably one of the reasons that I felt inspired to invite you on this platform so you can talk, so other people can listen to you and get that inspiration from you. And thank you again so much for sharing that. That is very vital. That is vital information. That's the kind of information I like to extort from you people who are doing great things. So thanks again. Thank yes, you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You've spoken to us about the character Dockers and that. Are you inspired by anybody? I know that you've mentioned that um, you wanted to bring in this the whole cross-dressing. Yes, as a Cameroonian, I've watched 
um, other countries, like cross dressers from other countries, have watched their comedy skits. And until you people came, came, across, came around, I think for now, the two main, I know you and Auntie Felicia, who are cross, cross dress uh, um, comedians. I, maybe there might be more, but you're the ones that are like in my head, always in my head, and I see you every day. And I understand that it's something that you you people are acting, but at the same time, it is such a challenge. Sometimes when I go online and I read what people say, I read what I read the trolls, right? It kind of it affects even me who is not in your shoes. And I'm like, oh God, how are they handling this? A lot of people look at you cross dressers to be homosexual or gay. How do you handle that kind of information? How have you been able to deal with that and just say, you know what, what you think? I hear you say it in some of your skits like, hey, I love you, those who love me. And I even love you, those who hate me. And even love you, those who pretend to like me. <laughs> Whenever you say that, I just love and I'm like, oh God, this guy is funny. How do you well, cross? It's actually not easy though. It's not easy, but this is where my journalism training comes into play. Because mm -hmm. as a journalist, you're being trained to um, on how to react to negativity. Mm -hmm. Because at times you might go and report a story that uh, the people behind are not comfortable with it. Yeah. And obviously you have all sorts of things coming your way. And you why training as a journalist we're all taught on how to deal with this how to handle such situations and everything and all my life i've always been in that situation where i'm being stereotyped or negativity being thrown my way so growing up i just became used to the only thing i do is i don't see it i don't just i act as if it's not even there i don't pay attention to it like no you can never go on social media and you drag me and you see me under the comment section oh. exchanging words. That's You'll not an easy thing me. to do. <laughs> yeah, the highest I could do is probably come and say, Oh, thank you so much. I love you too. Yes. I'll give I you love. That. I'll, yeah, I'll just let you do whatever you're doing. Yeah. Because once you make people know that if I say this, it affects this guy, everybody will come for that. Yeah. Once That's you make people know your weak point in life, that's where they will always attack you. Now, sometimes people, you know, some people will go and make some comments and feel like you shouldn't even feel bad. You shouldn't even react because you are a comedian. I'm like, I'm a comedian. Doesn't mean I'm not You're human. Not human. <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't have feelings. Yeah. That's why most of uh, these entertainers, the comedians in the world, go into depression because people just feel like they can just do anything to them. And it's okay. Some will even say, if they throw you negativity, turn it into comedy. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was going to be my next point. Like, how do you manage your mental health? How? Like how I said, there's one thing, one principle I have in life. That's my family. Mm -hmm. if, my, if my family is okay with every, anything I'm doing, I care less about what any other person says. Great. And you have from the, on, from the onset, you, you'll be shocked. My dad drove me at, to the airport when I was coming oh, here. Oh my God, that's sweet. When I was leaving the house, he was like, I hope you've taken the cooler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the cat and his cooler and her cooler. And this, and nice. this is pretendant of police speaking. My, nice. I see my mom, wow. she gives me my wig. Like, if I see something, like, because she's a stylist, yeah. when I see her with uh, a wig and I'm like, oh, this will be good for the character to cast, she'll be, she'll be like, okay, have it. Okay. <laughs> so my family is so accepting with what I do. They're so comfortable. They're okay with it. So far as they know I'm on the right path, they know the real me. Yeah. And not what people write on social media, this, that, that. I but do not care. Yeah. And there is this belief I always go with. Consistency breaks resistance. Yes. When you keep on doing so, you, you start today, people will be like, oh, what's that? That's bullshit. But when you keep on doing it, when you keep on doing it, and there is progress, they will end up being believers. Yeah. But when you do it and you leave it and all they see is uh, failure and everything, 
that's where they'll have the urge. They'll gather more momentum to talk down on you. But when they see you moving from one level to another, you're going up, they have no choice but to accept. Yes. And now uh, Cameroonians fail to see beyond cross-dressing comedy. And they just have this belief in them that they have this character, the fixed of a, who is supposed to be a man, who is supposed to be the figure called a man. Hmm. They have just built this and they feel like, okay. Now, in uh, contemporary society, they say, uh, but, but in, here in Cameroon or in Africa, they're like, the man is the head of the family. He's supposed to provide this, this, this. But it goes to the Western world. Okay, the man doesn't have a job, but he has a wife. So the wife... Sh- why, why are you receiving money from the wife since you claim you want to be the breadwinner, you want to do everything? Why are you receiving the support from your wife? Yeah. Whereas you are the one who is supposed to provide for the wife according to your so philosophy. Mentality, yeah, that's true. Because mm-hmm. I sat somewhere and I was asked what my favorite drink was. I said, I love bellies. And someone was like, that's... Na woman uh, mimbo. Na woman mimbo. I'm like, are you guys actually normal? <laughs> Like, how do you even reach the person producing it? Did they use uh, female hormones to put in the drink or what? I don't get. Where are you coming from with the fact that it's a... Uh... So if yeah, a guy drinks it, the guy won't be tipsy or how? I don't get. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we have just... We have bottled, like, ourselves in a container. Like, a guy, you should be like this. A guy should be like this. Yeah. I'm a guy, but I don't know, I do not know how to... I don't have the strength. I cannot split wood. But that doesn't stop me from being a guy. Yeah, I'm still a guy. Yeah, I'm a guy. I don't love football, but mm-hmm. I am still a guy. Yeah, I mustn't love everything that guys love. No, I have my own taste. Yeah, yeah, that being, is breaking same, through that, stero- yeah. that stereotype. It is a struggle. Are, it is a struggle. Yeah, minus mm-hmm. the fact that I do not love football. I'm not like this crazy football. Like uh, maybe following clubs and what. But when Cameroon is playing, it's like I'm inside the pitch. That's because it's my country and I love to support my country. I want to see my country go ahead. But yeah. that doesn't mean I'm a crazy person of football or I would live one day, go to the field to play football. No, I have my own things I love. Yeah. So once you put all these things into position and you say, okay, anyways, people have their own way of thinking. Yeah. Then and people's opinion should not thinking. determine. Yeah. yeah. If Jesus, the son of man, God, could be killed, then who am I? That can't be hated by some people. Oh, man, you're going to get persecuted. Be ready for, I'm sure you're already getting it, but I'm so happy with the kind of thick skin you have built. It's not easy. That's why I asked you about your mental health. And considering that you have family support, family is a huge one. So just by the you saying that gave me a little bit of, wow, this is nice, that you have a family that supports you. That's the most important thing because like it or not, no matter what you do out here, there are going to be people out there who hate. There are going to be people out here who will troll you. And if you give them the audience, you're going to fail. So I actually admire the way you are handling this and kudos, just keep doing it the way you're doing it. I think you're on the right track. Thank you. Yeah, that is great. So again, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about our entertainment industry in Cameroon. Right? We've had people talk about a ton of things like, hey, I've listened to videos or people have written blog posts about how Cameroon does not progress because we do not support our own. How Cameroon does not progress because there is not a lot of collaboration going on. But I also read a blog post that one of the Cameroonian um, bloggers wrote. And in that blog post... Okay. And in that blog post, they were admiring, they gave kudos to you, um, the other comedians, Caro and Copis, and Auntie Felicia for your collaboration. What would you say, what led you people into this kind of collaboration? We see you supporting Auntie Felicia, supporting Caro and Copis. We see them supporting you. The day you traveled to Dubai, they all posted it and wished you luck, which is what I think most Cameroonians are looking for in our entertainment industry. What, how did you people get here? Is it that you knew yourselves before you got into entertainment or did you get into entertainment and saw the importance of collaboration and decided to do it this way? How did you people manage to do this? This might inspire other entertainers out there to be able to mm-hmm. work the same way you people are working. 
Well, uh, before entertainment, I have known copies. That's mm-hmm. Love at Lambert. Mm-hmm. Mm, I had known uh, uh, Ko Elonge Felicia. Mm-hmm. Because Ko Elonge is actually a journalist. He studied yeah. journalism. He has a degree in journalism, master's in journalism. And he finally, um, happily about ob- obtaining his PhD. PhD, yes. <laughs> yeah. So he is, Ko Elonge himself is like an elder brother to me. Before comedy, like an elder brother to me, like uh, he is always there and love it. He is a good friend. Ben Lili and Carol, a very good friend. Mm. So, so having no, knowing these people before entertainment world is a plus. Yeah. To us, now you have what we call um, friends who want to see you to grow. And friends who are there with you because they are better than you. And once you get, uh, you start growing above them, They're this unaware. jealousy kicks in. But with us, we have what we call healthy competition. When I say healthy competition is when Felicia does this, I watch it. I'm like, okay, this is actually good. Let me also try to upgrade my game. So we keep on moving the same way. Yeah. When the Karan Kopis does this, uh, okay, now this, okay. When Dokaz does this, we're like, okay. Now we have this friend, we've have built this friendship. Some friends who grow up seeing that they are doing the same thing, they will like an empty set in, but no. Education too is key. When you have people who are built IQ wise, they have a good IQ and they know some philosophies in life on how to grow. You see that everything you do with these people will only elevate you to another standard. Right. Wow. Like if I sit, if I sit and I want to shoot a skit and I f- discover Felicia will play you like will really make this kid a powerful one. All I need to do is drop Felicia a message. Instantly, if he is actually too busy, he will say, okay, please forgive me about 10 or f- five minutes. If he is not, he will show up on set and we execute it. The same way with Caro and Kopis. Okay. Mm-hmm. The same way with Godis. Mm-hmm. That's, okay, yeah. Richard. that's Richard. That's Richard. Yeah. yeah. So this all boils down to unity, friendship, and a jealous-free environment. Yeah. That's their pain powerful. Is, their pain is my pain. My pain is their pain. Like if instantly if I say I'm not fine where I am in Dubai, they will make available calls to make sure I am okay. Yeah. That's the support we have. And for instance, some Cameroonian, like in the entertainment industry, some Cameroonian artists or filmmakers and whatsoever, they don't yet know the importance of collaboration. Mm-hmm. If I have 1,000 followers and Felicia has 1,500 followers and we jointly do something together, not all the 1,000 followers I have are probably exposed to Felicia. And not all the 1,500 followers Felicia has are exposed to me. So if we jointly do a collab together, that's 2,500 followers we are being exposed to each. Now, let's say 500 from Felicia end up following me. I move from 1,000 to 1,500. If now the 500 who never knew Felicia move to Felicia, Felicia moves from 1,500 to 2,000. Yeah. So that is growth. You're both growing together. That's the power of collaboration we really don't have in the entertainment industry in other sectors. Everyone is seeing everything as a collaboration, competition. And as as an entertainer, the first thing you need to know uh, positive fans and negative fans. Some negative fans will come to uh, ignite issues. Conflict. And if you read those kind of comments or such messages and you give a listening ear to it, it will affect the relation, a good relationship you have with your fellow artists. Yeah. So as an artist, segment yourself, segment and know, okay, this is positive energy coming from positive fans. And this, this is negative energy. Yeah. <laughs> so you just need to know all this. 
Yeah, that is good that you have gotten to this level. And the wish is that other other sectors in the whole entertainment industry can actually see how you people are doing and copy because. I've read people, I've read um, blogs on how people, what people think about this. And sometimes I buy into it, right? The collaboration in our entertainment industry is not that huge. I'm not saying that everybody must collaborate, but I don't think we have it enough. So again, this is me in my own little space, encouraging you people in the comedy, in the comedy space to keep doing what you're doing and again just try to involve as many other comedians as possible one day you will be able to come up with a great comedy movie in Cameroon I cannot just wait to see all of you in the movie that would be so nice and hopefully the other people the artists the musicians or the actors and actresses can actually follow the same footsteps and let's just help push our entertainment industry up I'm happy with what you people are doing watching from my own little bird's eye on the side it and that's probably one of the reasons that I will reach out and say hey I want to talk to this person because I admire what you people do and again just encourage you people to keep doing what you do it is not easy of course I don't think there is a, the fact that you're doing other things on the side is a sign that there is really not a lot of money in our entertainment industry in Cameroon at the moment that's why you will not sit and say you are a full-time comedian. You have your other things that you do. And again, the reason I bring this up is just to encourage all the other Cameroonians that are out there that probably just sit and say, hey, this one has failed, I cannot do this. If today, Docas, you put a skit on and let's say... you. You let's say you make some money out of what you're doing. I don't think that at the moment you're in the process of growing, right? Growth is coming. You you started and you blew for real. I'm happy with how fast you grew. I'm happy with how fast you're taking this. But at the same time, you're not letting go of what you're doing. If someday um, a company reaches out to you and talks about you getting into journalism, I bet that you will. Right. You do that because that is what you studied for. But it's not going to take away all the other talents that you have discovered in you. It's not going to take away the fact that you know how to do hair. And by the way, your hair is beautiful. I love it. It's I like Thank you so hair. much. Thank you. I see your I see Dokasi's boyfriend in Dubai that has the same hairstyle, if I'm not mistaken. Right. <laughs> I saw that. I saw when he welcomed you at the airport. <laughs> he has the same hairstyle like you. So that's that's really amazing. Couple goals. Yes, I really love what you do. And yeah, thanks for sharing your like how you people are managing the comedy sector in the Cameroonian entertainment industry. Is there any other thing that you would like to share? Or let me say, this is the You Can Be Anything podcast. It is a place where... I try to encourage people to bring out their best versions. I try to encourage people to not just settle because one side of life do not work. I personally do multiple things because in as much as, as I told you, I failed to do journalism and mass communication, this is me still bringing up an, an aspect of that, right? I decided to start a podcast because I've always really wanted to talk to people. And when I was young, I imagined that being a journalist was what I wanted to be. But again, Cameroon burnt down that dream for me. <laughs> but yes, today doing something else, I'm still able to talk to people and this makes me happy. So I want to put you in a spot where I would like for you, let's say you had a microphone in, like you're standing somewhere in Cameroon and you have a microphone that the whole country can hear you. What advice can you give to the Cameroonian youth that are listening to you at that moment? What would you say to that one person that cares to listen to you? Um, all I have to tell that person is, do what you're inspired to do. Forget about what anybody will say to push you down because they definitely will say it. But never you forget you are the one responsible for your life. You are the one responsible for what you eat. You are the one responsible for how you pay your bills, your clothing. Not everybody who smiles at you uh, is actually happy with what you're doing. So my doing so not to be left out from the happy moment. Right. Negativity will always come. Ups and downs will always come, but keep striving. 
talent is very is something very very vital to a human and with education and in addition with talent you can blow minds today i'm able to write kits write scripts out of my journalism training that en- it has enhanced my writing so do not fail on one path with the education get a skill some are born talent some are learned talent whichever one it may be take it put more effort and never try to like do not copy you can have a mentor you can have someone you look up to but do not copy that person but once you copy that person uh, we call it plagiarism i believe you know once you copy that person's work when anybody reads or watches or does whatever thing like sees what comes across whatever thing you do the first person that comes into their mind is the original author of the yeah, work that's right and you see you become second best you become second best but when you're original to your work in your in whatever you're doing yes you may not be the best in the world but you'll be the best at that thing because you are the only one doing it that way yeah that way you'll be number 1 and not number 2 But when you copy another person you become number 2 and we're all fighting to be number 1 yeah. imagine if some if another comedian comes up is put, doing the same makeup i'm doing everything once you see that person who will come to your mind of course doctor so you you are helping you are helping me to sell to publicize my work yeah but if you are original in your in what you're doing mm-hmm. when somebody sees you no no okay this is this person that's right this is that person so all i have to say is don't give up keep pushing you'll yeah. get there awesome thank you so much dr kas again you just mentioned your makeup like those <laughs> eyebrows like <laughs> whenever i look at your eyebrows i'm like is she looking at a mirror and i'm like these <laughs> eyebrows look the same all the time which means that is unique isn't it <laughs> the first time i saw it i thought it was some kind of a mistake then i saw it again and again and i was like okay that is how it is meant to be that is actually <laughs> and nice and i really love your how do you call your lipstick again the blood red pepper red pepper red <laughs> pepper red lipstick yes in fact you're doing a great job I appreciate you so much for saying yes to my invitation and for sharing what you just shared. For those who will be privileged to listen to you and I, I bet that they're going to pick up a lot of knowledge. And I pray that a lot of people listen to this and they really get to know where people like you are coming from. Where that mentality at 26 you're thinking like this. I bet you that you are going to go places because i bet when i was your age all i thought of was just going to get a masters go get a phd i never even imagined that i had a talent when i was your age for real so the fact that you're thinking at like the way you're thinking at the moment the way your perspective about collaboration and about growth and your awareness of your mental health I believe that you're in a spot where you have the potential to grow and I just want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing do not lose your vision just stay focused do what you're doing and do not forget that you have a ton of people behind you even if you don't see people like me every day supporting you or commenting under your stuff just know that we got your back and if you ever feel like you are in a spot where you need help do not hesitate to cry out for help reach out for help because i bet that there are tons of people out in the world whom you make laugh and who are ready to help you if they know that you are in a position where you need help never hesitate to ask for help because asking is what is going to lift you forward and you will get the support that you need to get the growth that you dream for Thank you so much Dokas for accepting my invitation and do you have any last words before we close this Um all I have to say is thank you for having me here to talk about myself my career and what I love doing I really do appreciate it Oh thanks again and my dear listeners I hope you enjoyed the little chat I've had with Dokas Nobody today again 
you're going to check out her page on Facebook. I think she's he, she's already very popular there. I hear you do TikTok too. Unfortunately, I don't do TikTok. It's too yeah, much for me on, to handle. On TikTok, uh, on TikTok, you can see find me as either Docas Gossiper or Docas Comedy World. Okay. Facebook, Docas Comedy World. Instagram, Docas Comedy World. Uh, YouTube, Docas Comedy World. Twitter, Docas Comedy World. Okay, great. Please follow her everywhere on all those platforms. Give her the support she needs as she builds this great character, Docas. Again, years to come, we are going to talk about how this came from inception to where it's going to get. And thanks again for listening. And remember, be good to each other. Thank you again, Docas. Thank you.